Hey everyone, the greatest goblin that ever lived is here for a, another comic book review. This one's really late, but uh, like I said, like I always say, I need to find the time to do these. And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, about a week late, so um, I apologize for that. But thank you again for watching this. And I only got five books to cover for this particular week of November uh, well, this is the end of October B slash beginning of November 2014. I got two DCs and three Marvels. We're going to start with DC. We're going to start with the uh, Harley Quinn Annual Number 1, which is the Super Rub and Smell Spectacular. This book stinks. Literally. I mean, this... Uh, God... Rub and smell. It's like the first ish, the first page. She's wearing a leather jacket. You rub it, and it smells like leather. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. This, it, it's not scratch and snip. You just simply got to take your fingertip and rub it. it. It's like she found out that something's gone wrong with Ivy, and there's also another page here. You, you smell Harley's naked legs, and it's supposed to smell like banana boat. Uh, suntan lotion. It's pretty sweet smell. Yeah. But, um, the, this thing is, the thing is that she's found out that something's happened to Ivy. And she goes to track, track her down. And when she finds Ivy, Ivy doesn't recognize her. Ivy doesn't know who she is. Ivy has no recollection of Harley. So what does uh, Harley do to try and snap Red out of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, this series has done a lot of things with the whole innuendo, the whole rumor spread that Harley and Ivy are, are lovers. Let me tilt this camera down a little bit. There we go. But I really think Connor and Palmiani, I think they took it even further and suggested that, yeah, they are lovers. Or were lovers or something like, or something like that. I mean, it's hinted at, it's not directly said, it's always hinted, it's always suspected. You know what, fuck it, just go ahead and just say it. Yeah, they're lovers. Who the fuck cares? Let it, let it, let it be known that they're, that they're, that they're hot for each other. You know, you might get some more good storytelling out of it. Who knows? Maybe it'll stink. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. Um, but... The rest of this book is literally an acid trip. Uh, an experimental drug, a bad batch of one at that, gets locked, knocked loose, and everybody's hallucinating. And it's just weird. But this was still fun. Now, keep in mind, this book is $5.99. But I think you're getting your money's worth here. A fun story, a story involving Harley and Ivy, and an interesting little gimmick here with the whole rub and smell thing. Because not every scent in here is pleasant. If you hate if you hate the smell of cheap pizza, don't rub and smell this book. Just read it. Because there's some pretty foul stenches in here, but there's a couple of nice ones in here. And the storytelling is good, the artwork is great, it's fun, the pacing is good, the character development is good. Even though there's a lot of fourth wall breaking, it's like DC is turning Harley Quinn into Deadpool. But that's not necessarily a criticism, at least not right now. This was good. It was fun, and I enjoyed it for what it was. I, uh, I give it a three and a half. Next up for DC is Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman number three. Oh boy, um, to everybody who worked on this, you, you tried your best, but I, honestly, the best thing about this book was the, this, was the cover, because I look at a cover like this, and I'm thinking, oh man, we're going to get some badass action with Diana in here, and I flip it open, and I see three separate stories that are deliberately not meant to be taking, taken seriously. You got the first story with Wonder Woman being a rock star for Athens, you got the second one... It's a cute little cartoon with uh, Wonder Woman and Catwoman 
where Catwoman steals a very, 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 very ancient artifact from Greece. And then you got the third story involving Wonder Woman and Supergirl, which is hilariously badly drawn on purpose. Wonder Woman in the third story looks more muscular than China did. I mean, god damn. Um, but the, the first story was easily my favorite one because it shows the, the, the true character of Wonder Woman that, that remains true. She's a fighter, she's a just, she's, she's an Amazon, she's a warrior, but at the same time, she's full of love and compassion, and she love and respects everybody, if they're on her good side. I mean, it's just really good. The first story was really good. The second, eh, was what it was, and the third one, wow. <laughs> just, wow. Uh, but, yeah, just... I'm, this is not on my pull list, so I'm not going to be heartbroken to drop it. It's just just not what I was expecting. It's a bait and switch. They got me with the cover, and then I read it, and I was like, yeah, I kind of felt disappointed. But for what it was, I enjoyed it. I thought it was nicely put together. Uh, they tried their best. Uh, I'll be nice and give it a three. Moving on to Marvel. Starting off Marvel with all new X-Men number 33, Bendis, Asrar. Ooh, this is getting good. This is getting really good. The X the, the original X-Men along with X-23, they are stranded in different places in the Ultimate Universe. And yes, I know that everybody's talking about it. Yes, the Ultimate Universe is soon gonna be going away. <laughs> Bullshit. Anything that goes away, whether it's a person, whether it's a character or a universe, Marvel will find some bullshit way to retcon it and bring it back so yeah whatever but let's enjoy the ultimate universe while we still have it i mean the ultimate universe was supposed to die in ultimatum yet it stuck around and we got a great character like miles morales Mo um, miles and gene work so well together they they complement each other through the seriousness the drama and the comedy it's just really good the scene with miles and his friend ganky with Gene, that was fucking hilarious. I loved it. That was easily my favorite scene in the book. You know, you got Bobby, uh, 60s Iceman, the original Iceman going toe to toe with the Mole Man and his group, Ultimate Mole Man. Beast has got his hands full with Victor Von Dam, the Ultimate Doc Doom. And uh, uh, X23 and Angel have got their hands full with Jimmy Hudson, Wolverine's son in the Ultimate Universe. But things take, you know, they're trying to figure out ways to get the X-Men back home. And Miles and Gene run into a little bit of a snag. I'm not going to spoil where they went. And I'm not going to spoil who they ran into. Just, oh boy, this was good. This was really, really good. Um, I think it's well worth your time, worth your money, and worth reading. Give it a shot. It's been really good. Not every issue of All New X-Men has been fantastic, but man, this is really good. A really good series. I've been enjoying it. Can't wait to see where they go from here. That cliffhanger was amazing. I give this... Fuck it, I'm going to give it a four. I thought it was really good. Then we're moving on to the last two books. The, the, wow, this was really tough to call. Uh, it's like... These last two books, it came down to which one was going to end up being my pick of the week. Which one was it going to be? I just couldn't decide, but I made my decision. My pick of the week, just barely, is Guardians of the Galaxy number 20. Brian Michael Bendis, the writing was phenomenal. Ed McGinnis, he's doing better with his artwork. I especially love how he draws Gamora. I love how he draws Gamora. Gamora looks awesome. Everybody else, eh, Drax, Drax sometimes looks like Thanos colored green and without the messed up fucking chin. Uh, but this, this particular issue, we finally get the answer what happened to Richard Ryder. 
And a lot of I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna say the 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 end result of what happened to Noah it's a little cliche it's a little overdone you know what yeah but I haven't seen storytelling like this storytelling done like this in quite a while with a heroic sacrifice I mean this was really really well done well executed Richard Ryder finally comes clean about a few things he's been hiding he comes clean right at the right time. You know, and you know, it's like there's compromises on both ends. You know, Star-Lord doesn't want to lie to his teammates, but he made a promise to Richard Ryder, and I'm not going to go into full detail about that. It's just the stuff that he lets loose for Richard Ryder against his wishes is just, wow, it's just true. To, it just really nails the character down. It, it, it actually creates some good points for Star-Lord as a character, because he doesn't need to be an overwhelming douchebag all the time. There are times he does have his moments, and this is definitely one of those times. It's just really well executed, really well paced, well put together. Ed McGinnis' artwork, I'm not always a fan of his artwork, but man, for this story, he nails it and he did a good job. With some minor nitpicks here and there, but this was fantastic. Loved it. The storytelling is what hit it out of the park for me. Fucking amazing. I loved the last page. You know, Gamora's questioning whether she should stay with the team or go on her go out on her own. And I'm not gonna spoil what happens at the end. Just fuck just phenomenal stuff. I love this. This gets a four. Like all new X-Men did, but it's like all new X-Men was good, but then this and the last book I'm gonna review, it was a toss-up. Which one was gonna end up being my pick of the week? This was really good, awesome. I loved it. We're ending it with Wolverine and the X-Men, number 11. Oh, man. Everybody who worked on this, you, everybody, Jason Latour, Ben Caldwell, Pharrell uh, uh, Derample, Rico Renzi, Robbie Rodriguez, Israel Silva, Vanessa Del Rey, Rico Renzi, and... Uh, well, yeah, I've already mentioned that. And uh, Chris Brunner. Everybody did a fantastic job with this. Jason Latour. This was good. This is part two of Logan's eulogy, if you will, with uh, his his former his former partner and lover, Melita. What's really interesting about this particular issue of Wolverine the X-Men is that it's in here we get to see Spider-Man's reaction to Logan's death. And that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. I'm like, Peter is just now learning of this? Wow. It's like, he, it's the way everybody, talk, the way Melita talks to Spider-Man about who Logan was and what kind of person he was. And, you know, he was, all, you know, it's like, like, and it's like Peter just, it just didn't click for him. And, you know, you know, it's always said a picture's worth a thousand words, and that's how it's that's that's how Peter's told. You you know Melita's letting her heart out. You know Melita's telling Peter what happened to Logan, but you don't see any speech bubbles. You don't see any dialogue because sometimes the way a picture, the way a page is drawn, you can just know they're having a conversation. Peter's being told what happened to Logan, and uh, he takes it. He doesn't take it well at first. And then we get to the second half of the book, which which helped me make my decision about making Guardians of the Galaxy my pick of the week. Quentin Quire. All I'm going to say is fuck you, you ungrateful, pink-haired little son of a bitch. Fuck you. And fuck everything about you. Marvel has done everything they possibly can to make this character as unlikable as fuck, and they succeeded. Fuck you, Quentin Choir. Just fuck you. This book gets a four. Well, that's all I got for this week, everybody. I want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, I got some more reviews that I want to do. I want to review the Death of Wolverine series. I have read it. I want to review it. Also, I uh, picked up some back issues here at Arkham Comics. Uh, I picked up the first three issues of the Logan Legacy. I have read the first issue, and I'll review that. I'm planning on reviewing that, as well as Death of Wolverine on my Blue Goblin X channel. That's also where I do my Midtown comic stashes. 
thanks to, uh, of course, Midtown Comics and my bro, the Mount Vernon Kid. Don't forget to subscribe here to Blue Goblin Zero One, and don't forget to slide by and go look at my Blue Goblin X channel. Uh, Jennifer and I, we'd we'd appreciate it if you checked out our Arkham Asylum Studio page. We just did it. We did a video there of a loot crate. We got a loot crate, an unofficial official loot crate, uh, put together by a couple of friends of ours. So go check that out, and uh, don't forget my my dearest friends here. Mountain Vernon Kid, Deadpoolzilla, Brandon Hex, they just, they're still just killing it here on YouTube for me. I'm thoroughly entertained by what they do here. Um, uh, look for me on Twitter, at BlueGoblin01. You can follow me on Tumblr, BlueGoblin.tumblr.com. Uh, look for my uh, Pinterest page. Go see, Look me up on Pinterest. It's not that hard to find. Uh, thanks again for watching, everybody, and until next time, I'll see you all later.